Bond Robbins is now on a surprising 18 points. <laughs> the fully Frank McCrossins on 18 points. <laughs> Invest in us now. Good evening and welcome to Magazine Mastermind. Earlier tonight, Richard and Adam were given fine journals to study and memorize. <laughs> we they now have to beat the clock and answer as many questions as they can about that publication. Our first contestant is Richard Feidler. Oh Your special subject tonight is issue one of cabling installation and maintenance. <laughs> Time begins now. <laughs> What is the optimum length of the jacket which should be stripped when terminating Category 5 cable to a 110 block? Is it one and a half inches, Paul? The right is right! According to Barney Tomasic, when Category 5 cabling was introduced, what was the catch cry? Category 5 uh, is Category 5. He's right, ladies and gentlemen! The new range of QLAN optical fibre cables feature the Afumex LSOH sheath. What does L-S-O-H stand for? I'm going to find <laughs> Low, Come salt, on. Come on. density... Uh, Richard, 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 Richard. He's it stands right, for... Yes. Yes. It's amazing! Thank you. What did Chris Malloy of Mollycom Telecommunications say about ABF or air-blown fibre? Oh, he said it's the sexiest thing around in cabling because you get this plug and you put it on a cable and you shoot it down a tube. You're right. It's a sea of niceness and loveliness. Plunging back and forth in and out, right, down a right. tube. Let it go. Ah. I'll give you ten bonus points if you can name the four new tests essential for checking that existing Category 5 cabling will go the distance. Uh, return delay. It's not return uh, uh, delay. Return, return speed. Return, no. return slowness. To sender. No. Return slowness. No. Return, I'll come back to that. Skew distortions. Wrong. Skew dis no. something like that. It's close to that. Yep. Um, skew whiff. Skew whiff. Go. Skew delay. Skew delay. Yep. Probationary. Point me again, I'll break your finger. Okay. <laughs> Pro, 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 production delay, probationary delay. Pro, this pro, is pro, uh, hey, I remember what it was like being in the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay, return loss. Yes. You had far end cross talk. Yes. You got two more, or you can let it go. We can move on. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> when Ron Catterall tested fast Ethernet over his installed Category Five cabling system, oh, what yeah. error rate did he get? About a fifty percent. He's right, oh, ladies and gentlemen. The main difference between SC type and ST type fibre optic connectors is the method of latching. Indeed. The SC type connector has a push pull latching yes. mechanism. How does the ST type work? It has a bayonet device that you sort of jab into the socket and give it a quarter turn. He's right, ladies and gentlemen! Which of the two connectors is the predominant style in use today, even though both the US and international building standards recommend its rival? It's the ST style one, I believe, Paul. It's the, the ST one today. Time. He's got that one too! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 wrong! He was wrong! He was wrong, ladies and so gentlemen! Please. Oh, you're so close to the He's a genius! He's a genius! He's like that Rain Man Clever. guy! Oh, <laughs> And at the end of your round on cabling, installation and maintenance, you scored nine points! Oh! <laughs> Unfortunately, you missed out on this special bonus question worth 100 points. When is length and thickness important in cable? And the answer? Porn. <laughs> Sir Richard Feidler, many thanks. And it well. Our second contestant is Adam Cooper. Your special subject in Magazine Mastermind tonight is Volume 7, Number 2 of Garrard's Pest Review. <laughs> Your questions begin now. What is the name of the pest control industry get-together held in all five mainland state capitals? October Pest. <laughs> How does Dr. Robin Bedding, a world authority on nematodes, distinguish a Changa cricket from a native cricket? Oh, well, you see, the Changa mole cricket is in fact a bit longer, being about three centimetres. Yes. It is olive brown in colour. Yes. And unlike our native cockroaches, it only has two digging claws on its front leg rather than native four. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to do to receive a free demand spray jacket? Order 24 one litre bottles of capsule suspension, easy to use, pyrethroid, pyrethroid insecticide. Yes! 
And who makes those 24 one litre bottles? The man. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll give you 10 bonus points if you can name all four food complaints the author of A Health Officer's View has been involved in. A dead mouse in a chocolate Easter egg. Oh! On a crucifix. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they found dead insects in potato chips and biscuits. Yes. They found vermin and their droppings baked in food products. Yes. And they found generally infected premises. Or infested premises. Infested. Yeah. <laughs> What was the first experience in pest control for Adrian Kerr? Ah, oh, this was about 55 years ago when our young Adrian was basically working with a stirrup pump and a 20 litre bucket. Spraying for what? For pests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. Yes! Let's okay. two further stages of Adrian's progress with pest control. And he moved on to the knapsack sprayer, yes. which he said, quote, was marvellous. You're right. <laughs> then he moved on to the motorised unit pulled on a sledge by two horses. You're right. Then he moved on to the tractor unit with an 800 litre tank. You're right! And all his neighbours said, Adrian, mate, come and do our farms. He's right, lazy. ladies and gentlemen! During hot weather, it is tempting to wear what? Nothing at all under your overalls when you are doing a pest control um, thing. Yes! <laughs> Where would you expect to find people enjoying themselves with cockroaches? The CSIRO, the Canberra Division, held the third annual Cockroach Derby Day on Melbourne Cup Day. At the end, they auctioned off the winners to the scientists to breed for next year's, which is a big drugs and sport Too issue. Too much information, you're right! <laughs> At the end of your round on Garrard's Pest Review, you scored 17 points! Oh, it's not your fault, Richard. No. He's a freak. Yeah. A, a smart freak. <laughs> Unfortunately, you also missed out on the 100-point bonus question. Oh, that. How many moths does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer, I don't know, but they just keep trying, don't they? <laughs> After that spellbinding round, that lot over there are on 27 points. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Bad Street Theatre. One member of each team will give us a visual interpretation of a recent news story. Their teammates must decipher it as quickly as they can. Team Robbins, would you please choose a champion? I'm going for Gene! Gene? Yay. Okay. No. You'll be wonderful. I choose, I choose Gene because she's I skilled in many ways. Oh. And he did really badly at the last game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I can't do mine. did it really well. You know, mine. mine. Not mine. No. Okay. As you can have tell, a look I'm at your, Have a look at your little mime thing there. Don't let him see. Oh, oh look. Righto. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Okay. Off you oh, go. I'm off. Okay. Okay. Go, Genie. Go, Genie. Go, Genie. I'll kick a goal, Genie. Go. Your time begins now. Pussycat. Pussycat. Dog. Puppy dog. Puppy dog. Yeah. Pussycat. Wing. Puppy dog. Dog. Pets. Dogs and cats. Pets. 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 You're shoving something in a pet. <laughs> oh, pets going bye-bye on a holiday. Pets, pets, mm. pet funerals. Pet on the trip. Pet, pet, pet trip. Traveling, traveling pets. Pet, pet holiday. Traveling pets. Traveling oh, pets. Oh, it, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good point. Oh, custom pet. Custom pet. The British government yeah. are talking about bringing in passports for pets instead of a stamp little paw here <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, because pets are, um, uh, pets are actually getting away from their owners and travelling on their own. They uh, <laughs> tend to like pets more than immigrants generally yeah. too, don't they? Just so you can have a chance with this game, I'm going to give you a full ten points! Under changes to British quarantine laws, Australian pets will soon be issued with new pet passports. 
Until now, Britain has only given passports to one species of animal, backpackers. Hello, can I wash your windscreen? But allowing pets to cross international borders is just an invitation to use them to smuggle drugs. And if you were a customs officer, would you want to give a jet lag Doberman a cavity search? <laughs> and you know what dogs are like. First it'll get air sick, then three minutes later it'll be eaten out of the air sickness bag. <laughs> Britain decided to give animals their own passports after an embarrassing incident when the Queen tried to smuggle a horse into Britain on her daughter's passport. <laughs> It's a bit rife, isn't it? Yes, it Have is. Have some sugar, Anne. <laughs> the good news is the UN is investigating the scheme in case it's just a cunning plan to smuggle Britain's mad cows out of the country <laughs> using false papers. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's already a black market. Two weeks ago, a rat was arrested at Heathrow trying to sneak in using a duck's passport. <laughs> the rat objected, claiming it was his picture and he was a platypus. <laughs> Team McCrossan now, choose a champion. Well, I'm going to ask Pest Man to decide that, because he's a genius. Pick a number between one and ten. Five. Wrong. Good luck, champion. <laughs> Come in. You're going to regret this. Twice, just in case you miss a word. <laughs> Is this the sexy one? <laughs> okay. Time begins now. All right. Pregnant lady? Are uh, you a Spice Girl? <laughs> you, you've got a baby. Baby, baby. Give him birth. Babies, you've slapped the baby around because you don't like it. You're shaking the baby. You're a nanny shaking the baby. No. The baby's not breathing. Okay, the baby's. It's in a humidity crib. It's in a humidity crib. And you're smelling it. <laughs> You've got a can of... Can oh, you're, you're giving the child something in the humidity cream. Beer! You give it beer. <laughs> it's beer for you're baby! Giving it. Okay, you give, okay it's a, you're giving the kid... Uh, a little something to play with? Baby share. Uh, the, the, the to toys. Um, your kid's kid sucking, sucking on the toy. Uh, the kid's it's playing with the toy and... <laughs> and the toys! The animal attacks the child in <laughs> I'm only going to give you five points though, because otherwise it just wouldn't be fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, no. I'll give you ten! Yeah. I just, look, I just wanted to have hey. some competition in it. I mean, you know, this right way. Because... I was just trying to do the right thing because... <laughs> Richard screwed up the other no, one. Rich, no, no, you're not. No, 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 no. No, no, you, right. no, you did. No, look what you've done. No, it wasn't. Look. You've undermined me. Hey. Rich, Rich, you did your best. It just wasn't good enough. No, I think oh. you should give Richard some points for that. Yeah. Not for overacting. Yeah. <laughs> A study has found one third of all teddy bears kept in the intensive care incubators in the maternity ward at Melbourne's Royal Hospital were carrying potentially deadly bacteria. If you go down in the ward today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down to the ward today, you're in for a quick demise. But every bear that ever there was is coughing phlegm for certain because today's... Today's the day the teddy bears spread their sick net. A specialist said there are benefits in putting a soft toy in cots, but more research is needed to establish how safe it is. In the meantime, newborns will only be allowed to play with nail guns and pit bulls. <laughs> Putting the infectious toys in the cots is intended to cheer up the infants. It also does wonders for the morale of the bacteria. <laughs> Infection has even become part of the hospital bedtime story routine, with books like Snow White and the Seven Warts, <laughs> Little Red Riding Abscess, <laughs> and of course the classic Pussing Boots. <laughs> Tweeting the teddies is expensive. Paul, and un Paul, you said tweeting. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're doing to your teddy, but I never tweeted mine. <laughs> Actually, whilst, whilst we're talking teddy bears, is it just me? 
Or is that crunchy peanut butter bear scare the oh, poop out of you? That's <laughs> terrible. I mean, I mean, the kids have had a mango of it. You see it limping along. It's got one good angry eye left. Then just the end, the knife comes up. Arnold Schwartz and Teddy. <laughs> My father was killed by a teddy bear. <laughs> No, sorry, no, it was a car. <laughs> You've got to let go. I was driven by a teddy bear. <laughs> no, sorry, it was an Italian woman. Treating the teddies is expensive, and unfortunately, hardly any of them are covered by teddy care. One team of surgeons operated on a teddy for nearly three hours and all they got out of him was a pair of pyjamas and an odd sock. <laughs> At the moment, them, 37 points. <laughs> them have streaked ahead on 45 points. <laughs> What's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, who's going to win this battle of tights? It's <laughs> At the business end of the show, Mikey, Jean, Richard, your strange but true clues were the key ring. And Tinkerbell turns the page. <laughs> the, the rice. Raw rice to mm. be thrown. And the broken heart. Oh. Mm. Poor broken heart. And your answer. Basically, it's the, world, it's the world's worst curry, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, a, a chap in America, strangely enough, who was so in love with his automobile. His car. His car. He's gone and got a, a, a license to marry it. Broken heart, he jilted his fiancée. Yeah. yeah, the Cortina that he had before the current car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. He's marrying his car, and the only advice I'd give him on the wedding night is let that car sit for a good hour in the garage before you go near the exhaust pipe. <laughs> women though aren't they they're always women anyway she's a real go she's a little beauty she's, she's hard to start she's hard to st no the thing about i think yeah. no there's advantages she's, she's her nipples are always greased <laughs> you can start her on a cold morning with just a bit of choke uh, <laughs> and there's four on the floor Whenever you want it, maybe. And if it's a, if the car's a convertible, you can drive round with a top down and the police don't pull you over. <laughs> and then, no, there is a disadvantage though. She rolls over, you go with her. <laughs> She's concerned. Yeah. I know my cars. And that's amazing. That's going to carry on to 47 big fat points. Tennessee idiot, Buster Mitchell, was jilted by his girlfriend, so he applied to marry his 1996 Mustang GT. It was such a romantic proposal, too. He drove to a secluded spot, got down on one knee before her. The handbrake slipped, and she pinned him against a tree. <laughs> Mitchell says there are three things you need for a successful relationship with your car. Trust, communication, and a rally-tested lubricant. <laughs> Sadly, Buster's marriage application was rejected. The problem wasn't that she's a car, it's that she's only three years old. <laughs> In Tennessee, you have to be 12. <laughs> Buster says he may not be allowed to marry his car, but that isn't going to stop him servicing her every 10,000 k's. Oh, 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 suddenly they've grown a moral spine. <laughs> hey, show us your airbag. <laughs> You show us your conrod. <laughs> I'll whip me dipstick out in a minute. <laughs> Wipe it. The dog. The dog. The dog. Bang! <laughs> Julie, Adam, Corinne, you were toying with the answering machine? <laughs> the alien. <laughs> And the fish. Hey, Cyril, how are you going? Yeah, all right, how are you? Hey, did you know that fish only have a three-second memory? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Computer geeks around will recognise this as the universal sort of screensaver symbol, goldfish going backwards and forwards. So just imagine a box going round here, 
and it's basically your average PC user at home, geek boy, basically the people what listen for answers from the aliens from up there can't be bothered listening anymore by themselves, so they farmed out all the listening to the aliens, to the people with fish on their computers. They have outsourced listening to hear if there is life on another planet. And so all these kids with PCs are waiting desperately for messages from outer space. It's called schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they have it. Hey! Australians on the internet are being asked to turn their home computers into answering machines for aliens. The plan involves using PCs to help analyse billions of signals from a giant radio telescope in Puerto Rico. Yeah, or it gets a salsa music. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of message do you expect aliens to leave? You know, lock up your cows and clench your buttocks, we're on our way. <laughs> Time to go inside with Clench plenty your of buttocks. buttocks. Yeah. Right, what about what about this one? I'm not doing anything this weekend. How about we hook up? I molest you, sterilise you, and erase your memory. Call me. <laughs> you know I've got that message. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. We got lost, but we'll be back to pick you up on Sunday, Pauline. <laughs> Anyway, if you want to be involved, all you have to do is download a screensaver from the internet which interprets data from deep space. But they haven't thought this through, have they? What, what if the aliens look like flying toasters? <laughs> Everyone would just think it's their old screensaver until it's too late when giant flying toasters are hovering over all our major cities, ready to turn each and every one of us into intergalactic toast. <laughs> most famous woman not to have sex since the Virgin Mary, although both did have to argue their case on a technicality. <laughs> Meanwhile, under this roof, Mikey Robbins, Gene Kitson and Richard Feidler scored a face-hugging 47 points! <laughs> Intimately pro by Julie McCrossum, Adam Cooper and Corinne Grant on a chest bursting 50 points! Yeah. So we don't... Uh, we're unhappy. <laughs> yeah, we're crying. Yes. <laughs> oh, boo -hoo, we're so sad. <laughs> 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 of course! So we say, don't forget, for the next few weeks, Good News Week will be coming to you from the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. It's going to be huge. Well, maybe. <laughs> for now, we leave you with the good news that the ban on chocolate cigarettes will only take effect in the ACT, not right across the country. Otherwise, what are bananas in pyjamas going to do after sex? <laughs> good night. It's good news,